Hi, welcome to Dr. V's AP Chemistry Podcast. Today, we're focusing on equilibrium problems, where the equilibrium constant is small because there's an approximation we can introduce that will make our lives a little bit easier. So that's really our objective for this webcast. Use the ICE strategy, initial change equilibrium tables, to find the equilibrium concentrations when we're given only initial values. But because the KEQ in this problem is going to be very small, we're going to be able to introduce an approximation that will make our math a little easier. It will help us avoid the quadratic equation um, because that's very time consuming. And we'll get an answer that's very, very close to the answer we would have gotten if we did it directly. So let's actually jump right to the problem. Nitrogen and oxygen combine to make two molecules of nitrogen monoxide. So they react in this one to one to two ratio. As always, if you need to pause something to write it down or listen to it again, of course, you should definitely be doing that. So here's our problem. At 1500 Kelvin, the equilibrium constant, Kc, is 1.0 times 10 to the minus fifth. That's a really small number, right? That's going to help us with this strategy. A sample of air has an initial concentration of nitrogen of 0.8 molar and an initial concentration of oxygen of 0.2 molar before the reaction occurs. So those are our initial concentrations. Calculate the equil equilibrium concentrations of the reactants and products after the mixture has been heated to 1500 Kelvin. All right, let's go on and do this. In gray, I've got just sort of all that introductory material, the problem, just listing everything out. Um, we know our KEQ, we know our initial concentrations. The first thing, of course, we should do is start with an equilibrium constant expression. It's a KC because we are given concentrations. All right, and we were told it was a KC on the previous slide. Products over reactants, coefficients become exponents. This should be old hat for you at this point if you're listening to this webcast. I certainly hope that you've seen that before. All right, but that's the form that we'll take. Write that down. We're going to need that later. Okay, so we know our initial concentrations of nitrogen and oxygen. All right, this means we can actually go ahead and set up our ice table. Remember, ice, initial change equilibrium. All right, those are our rows in the table. We have a column for each reactant and product in the reaction. So I'll put in my initial concentrations, 0.8 molar for the nitrogen, 0.2 molar for the oxygen. The nitrogen monoxide concentration is initially zero, right? Because it wasn't included, it wasn't mentioned, we can safely assume that that was our initial concentration. So we can then think about, okay, since I only have reactants initially, I have to shift right. I have to have reactants and products at equilibrium, and at equilibrium, of course, we won't see any change in their concentrations. I have to shift right. So that means that the concentration of nitrogen has to drop by x, because it had a coefficient of 1. The concentration of oxygen has to drop by x, because, again, it has a coefficient of 1. And the concentration of NO has to increase by 2x, because its coefficient is 2. All right, so we can then fill in our equilibrium concentrations in terms of x, right? 0.8 minus x, 0.2 minus x, plus 2x. Great. Now, we don't know what x is yet, so part of what we have to do is solve for x. So we're going to substitute our equilibrium concentrations in terms of x into our Kc expression. So we'll bring that back and substitute and evaluate, all right? So that's what we get, 2x squared over 0.8 minus x times 0.2 minus x, that's substitution. We know the Kc was equal to 1 times 10 to the minus fifth. All right. Now you're looking at this probably going, oh, I'm going to need the quadratic equation. And you're right. You could solve this with the quadratic equation. And if you want to do it, go right ahead. If you've got a program in your, science, in your programmable calculator, that in your graphing calculator that can do that, go right ahead and do it. But sometimes it's quicker and almost as accurate to do an approximation. Let's talk about that. Because the value of our KEQ is very, very small. When I say very small, what I mean is less than 10 to the minus fourth. That's really important, all right? If it's smaller than 10 to the minus fourth, then we can make an assumption that X is very small compared to those original concentrations. All right, we can't ignore x when it's just x, but we can ignore it effectively in terms of the initial concentrations that were given. All right? And so we can assume that x is much, much smaller than 0.8, and that x is much, much smaller than 0.2. So much smaller that we're going to ignore it. 
all right? And therefore, 0.8 minus x is approximately 0.8, and 0.2 minus x is approximately 0.2. Now again, we can only do this when the KEQ is less than 10 to the minus fourth, but our KEQ is 1 times 10 to the minus fifth, so it definitely fits into this category. What we're basically assuming is that x is less than 5% of the initial concentrations, and therefore by ignoring x for 0.8 minus x and for 0.2 minus x, then we're not introducing a significant error here in our math. All right. Um, at the end, after we calculate x, we'll have to go check and make sure it really does fall into this less than 5% guideline. All right. So when I make this simplification, I don't need the quadratic equation anymore, all right, because it's 2x squared over 0.8 times 0.2 equals 1 times 10 to the minus fifth. So it's much easier to solve directly, all right, without using the quadratic equation. Again, you can do that, but the whole point of this webcast is to show you the simplification. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and solve for x. Remember, 2x in parentheses squared becomes 4x squared. That's probably the most common error I see uh, in equilibrium problems. All right, just be really careful about that. Um, all right, and then the denominator is 0.16, so I can just rearrange, right? I can distribute my values. Divide both sides by 4. I need to take the square root of both sides, and now I can solve for x. All right. Because I only knew my equilibrium constant to 2 sig figs, really I only know x to 2 sig figs. But it's tiny. It's a really small number, 0.00063, right, or 6.3 times 10 to the minus 4th. It's small. Okay. So, now that we know the value of x, we can find the equilibrium concentrations. We can go back to our ice table and calculate that and double check that. Right? So the concentration of nitrogen at equilibrium is 0.7994. That's a tiny change from the original concentration. The oxygen concentration is 0.1994. Really not a significant change from the initial concentrations. And the NO concentration has to be twice x, right? or 1.3 times 10 to the minus three molar, right? really small numbers. Um, I'll notice in the ice table, I didn't put in all the precision, but 0.799 is not that different from 0.8, right? So as a check, you can always take your equilibrium concentrations and put them back into your KEQ. Do you get the same value back? Yes, yes you do. You can check that if you want to on your own. Um, and the last thing we have to confirm is, was this an appropriate method for this problem? Was the approximation value valid? Right? Was x less than 5% of the original concentrations? Well, x was 0.00063. The, the smaller of the two initial concentrations was 0.2 molar. All right? And so x is 0.315% of that. I didn't even worry about sig figs here. Right? Definitely that's less than 5%. And so this was a, a perfectly acceptable strategy to solve this problem if you don't want to use the quadratic equation. And quite frankly, if you're in a rush, especially if it's a test situation, you want to be able to do the problems in a faster way, and that's what this allows you to do.